Hey there, it's Jason Gorman from Codemanship with another video diary entry on a bright and sunny Saturday morning here in London. Before I begin, if you're enjoying these videos, please like and subscribe and ring the bell for notifications of new content. Okay, now in a previous video, I sort of demonstrated this idea of um, essentially creating a, a, a facade for our test code, um, a, a simple interface through which we interact with the, uh, the system that we're testing, um, which allows us to abstract our tests. And I, I've got the example that I used here that's driving a shopping basket for a, a guitar shop. Um, and you can see in, when we read these tests, um, this could be a system test. It could be um, uh, going to web pages and clicking on links and doing that kind of thing. But it could also be a, a, a test of the internal logic, the model, if you like, of the application. Um, what we've done with these tests is we've abstracted the interactions with the basket. You can see there with this interface called iBasket Driver. So we're performing sort of logical actions like um, creating a new basket, adding products to the basket, um, checking the total of the basket and stuff. But we, the, the details of how we're doing that, how we're interacting with the system are hidden. Um, and you'll notice that this um, end unit uh, test class here um, is abstract. We, we can't run these tests directly. We need um, something that extends this uh, uh, set of abstract tests um, with different setups. Uh, for example, we've got the web driver here, um, which that i basket driver interface i'll just prove it at the top um, and it is actually using selenium's chrome driver selenium web driver to go to the home page um, to um, find elements on the, the web page and click on them and so on and so forth so we're mapping these logical user actions like adding items to the basket and checking the total onto the physical reality of, of how the web page actually works like that but that's all hidden from our tests. We've got another version of this um, that implements the, um, the same um, interface. Let's find our basket model driver. So this is driving the internal model, the actual C-sharp classes that implement the logic of the shopping basket internally. Um, but it's the same interface. And very importantly, it's the same abstract tests in both cases. So what I've done here is I've created a, um, a design for my test code that allows me to either run this logic, these logical tests as end-to-end -end tests, as system tests against the web page, um, or I can run them as internal tests of the model. And the test code itself does not need to know, it doesn't care. The decision about which setup we're gonna use here, which, which way are we gonna drive the system is taken in these classes that implement uh, that extend our abstract tests um, and essentially assign different kinds of um, basket driver, whether it's the, 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 the basket driver that drives the internal model or in the case of our web tests, um, the basket driver that, that um, drives the, um, the web UI itself. Um, so this is a pattern that I use very often, particularly for something called contract testing. Now I'm going to show you what a contract test looks like. So the idea of a contract test is if you're working on software that has external dependencies like consuming web services, that kind of thing, um, it is very useful to get early warning when something has changed at the other end, essentially when the, the people developing, working on that dependency, maybe they do a new release that is not backwards compatible with your code. They essentially, they break the contract, and hence contract tests. And the way that we implement contract tests is very, very similar to what I did with that web drive, that basket driver idea. Um, we have, let's just find it, um, abstract tests. There's the base. Um, I'm overloading, I've gone a bit Java there, abstract sales history test base. Um, but um, the idea is that we have this abstract test um, that is working against a product sales history. And then we have this method, this factory method that creates um, the thing that speaks to the external dependency. In this case, the thing that speaks to the web service that fetches um, sales totals for products in our guitar shack. Um, but the decision as to what kind of web service to create is, is deferred, it's abstract. And then we can implement that. So we have, for example, let's take a look at the contract test version. So that's actually using a real endpoint. That's actually connecting to a web service on Amazon um, EC2. 
Um, so that essentially is an integration test, if you like. It's checking that we're, when we talk to the real web service, um, everything works, basically. But there's another version of this, another implementation, let's find our sales history unit test, that's creating a stub version, basically, a stub version of the, um, the web service um, that returns um, a, a fake response, basically, uh, returns fake JSON data for the purposes of our test. So we're swapping out the endpoints. We've got a, one with a real endpoint and one with a stubbed version of the endpoint, essentially a, a unit test, as I would define it, that runs fast. Um, and the idea of this is not just to test that our sales history class is working correctly, but also because we've got two versions of the test, the same test for two different setups, one that really connects to the web service and one that only pretends to, if our unit test version is still passing, but suddenly our contract test version starts failing, that strongly implies that something has changed at the other end because the only thing that's different is that we're actually connecting to the web service, connecting to the real endpoint. Um, so contract tests are a great idea. So many teams these days are working within organizations where a lot of their systems are interconnected, service oriented, if you like. Um, and there are lots of different dependencies they need to worry about. And one of the things that teams spend a lot of time on is fixing things that were broken by other teams, basically broken contracts. So it is really useful to have contract tests, tests you can run that, that give you a heads up pretty much straight away if something has changed at the other end. Um, and they're also very useful if you are developing one of those dependencies, if you're working on a, a web service, for example, to run your, if you can, if you can rig this up, um, run your um, client um, uh, build and test cycle. So if there are teams that depend on you, run their build and test, run their contract test, basically. Uh, and that gives you a heads up before you do a release um, as to whether or not um, you've actually broken client code. It's, maybe that's unavoidable, but it is good to know. Too many, too many teams are doing it totally unwittingly. They don't know that they're doing it. So these are very useful. And they're another example of how we can take an abstract version of a test and then vary the setup of that test to make it two different kinds of tests. One is essentially an integration test and the other setup makes it essentially a unit test. So this idea of abstract test is very useful. And the idea also of having some kind of abstraction, some kind of facade like the interface that we've got for our basket driver that the tests are written against so they don't know the implementation of the system they're actually testing. They're going through this very simple facade that models the actions and the outputs that they're expecting to be able to use, the logic of the user experience, if you like. And because it's the same logic, whether it's represented externally or whether it's represented internally. Um, and it's the same idea, basically. We've got an abstract version of the test um, here. Um, and then we've got different implementations, basically different setups. In one setup, it's a system test. It's actually using Selenium Chrome driver. And in the other setup, it's a, a test of the internal logic. It's actually working against the, uh, the internal classes. So I'm going to propose an argument here because there's many, many discussions about what are the differences essentially between system tests and integration tests or contract tests and unit tests. And I've always had a very clear idea what they mean in terms of the, the level at which you're testing. System tests are end-to-end. -end. You're going through the front door, if you like. Um, um, uh, unit tests, you're inside the house, but you don't go out into the garden. Um, and an integration test is you go into the garden, basically. You go outside. Um, so, so I've always been clear on that. But, but one circle that, that I've seen so many teams struggle to square, myself included in, in my long career, is um, at what level should you write your tests? And what I'm saying is you should write your tests at the abstract level. You should write your tests at this kind of level so that they are agnostic about how they're actually interacting with the system. And they're agnostic about whether they're including external dependencies or not. Like my um, abstract test that could be a contract test or a unit test, essentially. Um, so I'm proposing that the real difference if you write your tests in this kind of style, the real difference between a system test, um, an integration test, and a unit test is not the logic of the test itself, but the setup of the test. What we're doing here is we're varying the setups um, with different basket drivers or with different web services or things that pretend to be web services. That's the setup that's different, but the tests are identical. So that's my proposal for today. I think the, the, the true difference between a system test and an integration test 
and a unit test is the setup. The tests are all about the same thing. They are about the logic of the user experience. What is the user doing and what are they expecting to happen when they do that? Whether it's represented at the system level, whether it's written at the controller level or the service level, whether it's written against the internal model, um, whether it involves external d databases talking um, or web services or things like that is not the point of the test really, although obviously each test will reveal different things. For example, if, you're, if your tests are all written at the controller level, or maybe you've got view models, you're using that sort of pattern where you have an abstract representation of the user interface that you can write unit tests against, then maybe the only time you would need to run actual system test versions of those tests is when someone has actually changed the user interface. For example, changed the HTML or changed um, a star sheet or something. Um, similarly with um, uh, integration and contract tests, um, you're probably not going to be changing that integration code very often, but you do need to be mindful of the f when new versions of those dependencies are being released. Um, so maybe those are the times that you would want to run those versions of the tests. Either you've changed your integration code or, or um, something has changed at the other end and you now need to check that everything still works when it's integrated. Um, and unit tests, of course, is ideally what we would use to test the vast majority of the code when we change it. So I'm sort of leaning very heavily towards this idea, and I'll be, I'll be recommending for some, some of my clients, maybe they want to give this a go, if they try writing their test at this sort of abstract level, uh, which is a good idea anyway, I think, because it decouples your tests from the implementations, and makes it much easier to change the implementations without having to rewrite all your tests. So it's a, it's a decent idea anyway, and it's a great way of removing... Um, uh, hiding the complexity of the system you're interacting with, where, whether it's the details of web pages or the complexity of an internal model. Um, so it simplifies. As you can see, this test code is very simple compared to tests that would actually be going to web pages and clicking buttons and so on and so forth. Um, so it's a good idea to do anyway, but it also means if we do it in, in this sort of abstract way, that we can vary the setups of these tests so they are driving the application at different levels and for different reasons at the system level at the integration level and at the unit level um, so the same set of tests the same suite of tests the only thing you're varying really is the setup the way that you're interacting with the system and how the system is configured behind the scenes so there you go that's that's my thought for the day um, i hope you're keeping well and staying safe we live in strange times um, until the next video Keep on coding.